station on Space to Ground. What happens to the heart in space? Welcome to Space to Ground, I'm Gary Jordan. New equipment and experiments are being transferred from the two resupply vehicles that arrived last week onto the International Space Station. One experiment brought up on Dragon is not for the faint of heart, but has a lot to do with understanding what happens to that muscle during long stays in space. Kate Rubin started the heart cells experiment this week that looks at what happens to the heart muscles when astronauts stay in space for long duration missions, how it grows, contracts, and changes at the genetic level. The heart cells being studied are actually human skin cells that scientists induce to become stem cells, which can differentiate into any type of cell and then force them to grow into human heart cells. They'll be cultured on the station for a month and analyzed for cellular and molecular changes before returning to Earth on the SpaceX Dragon. Astronauts and cosmonauts wasted no time this week transferring the five and a half tons of food, supplies, and experiments from the SpaceX Dragon and the Russian Progress vehicles to the station. Astronaut Kate Rubin swapped out a newly refurbished spacesuit brought up on the SpaceX Dragon for one that will be taken back down to Earth on the same craft for maintenance. Also unpacked, a portable DNA sequencer, new temperature regulation hardware, new computers, new solar cells, and much, much more. We have two great questions this week from Robin and Jesper, who are asking how water and oxygen are provided to the astronauts on the International Space Station. Well, as you can imagine, it would be pretty difficult to ship fresh water and oxygen up to the station all the time, so to maximize efficiency, they are recycled. Water is collected in the station's water recovery system from virtually any place it can. Urine, hand washing, oral hygiene, sweat, even the crew member's breath. The water is filtered and distilled within the system to produce drinking water. Some water is fed into the oxygen generation system that splits hydrogen and oxygen through a process called electrolysis to produce breathable air. The hydrogen is either discarded into space or fed into the Sabatier system that creates more water by combining with the remaining byproducts in the station's atmosphere. And there you go, a partially closed loop system that constantly recycles air and water. Keep sending us your questions and comments using the hashtag space to ground. We'll see you next week.